looking at all the people. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's so lovely. My goodness. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. So welcome to our very first gong talk with Don and Bob. Uh, we're going to be doing this twice a week. And then just a little way of us all staying connected during this time, as well as a super amazing opportunity to connect with Don and Bob and different invited friends of the gong from around the world. So I'm going to hand it over to Bob. Good morning. So um, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be able to do this with Don and everybody around the world to come together and talk about what we do and what we're passionate about. And um, I'm, well, I mean, Don and I and Yell and Lindsay were all absolutely blown away by the amount of people who've uh, signed up and come to join us. And it's such a wonderful, wonderful thing. So um, thank you so much for, for, um, for joining and, and um, coming in to spread this wonderful message that we're all trying to carry around the world at the moment. That for many of us, Don has brought to us. And um, I know as my teacher, I feel truly blessed to be able to work with him regularly and spend time and talk about all things gone. And um, it's lovely opportunity that's come about really because of this situation that we're all in. And like the true gong uh, journeyman that we are, we're all turning this around into something that's going to um, benefit the world and uh, the future generations that are coming forward. So um, it's a real testament to how we can make a silk purse out of a pig's ear. Uh, it seems to be what we're all really good at. Um, it's so lovely to see all your smiley faces. I've got all these wonderful little squares here with all these people, and it's absolutely thrilling. I'm, I'm like, I'm buzzing all over, and I know Don will be too. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Bob Horwell, and um, <clears throat> I work uh, with sound and, among other things, um, uh, started working with sound quite a few years ago when I was in my 20s, and... Um, eventually found Don. I started my career as an actor and a filmmaker and um, was using sound um, all the time in our, in our Shakespeare shows. I had an all-male Shakespeare, all Shakespeare company, which we toured around the world. And um, sound was a huge part of that work. Finally met Don, who also is a, a fellow thespian. And um, we locked in together and started to throw some ideas around and having great fun and talking regularly. And uh, the, the results of that have been really fruitful for, for myself. And um, we have great fun uh, talking about theatre of the soul, which is something that we're both really passionate about. And at some point we're gonna talk about in one of these gong talks, uh, theatre of the soul, what it is, why we do it, and um, how it's been integrated into the work we do. So, um, Don's there. You all know Don. Um, he's our teacher. He's the first kind of gong master that, that I met. He's a constant source of inspiration for me. What's wrong? His books and oh. his teachings. And uh, um, that was the, that was your L telling me not to move around so much. Oh, so you were getting direction from the director. <laughs> <laughs> that's great i love it you're looking for a handkerchief yeah you're looking for a hanky i love that um and i know that don's been a constant source of inspiration for many of you as well so it's such a pleasure to be able to do this and chat the chat chew the fat today which is what we love to do and although we have a load of questions that you've all sent in and we've put in this lovely ball here so <laughs> Um, we have a, obviously we have a ball, a, a singing ball somewhere, but it's down at our studio locked away and we haven't been down there very much since the um, quarantining. So we've used this lovely big stainless steel bowl for now. And we're going to pull the questions out that you've sent in and we're going to chew the fat on them and uh, see where it takes us. Um, is that okay, Don? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You know, uh, Bob, uh, yeah. 
I'm really so proud that you're 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 comm commandeering this whole thing. Um, but I'd like everybody to know not to take us too seriously. So, uh, so Bob, I know that you know a lot about a lot of no's. You know oh, yeah. a lot. I know. But you, have, put, you have the nose in your pocket. No, I've put the red nose away. You put uh, it I had it, yeah, and I've left it in the bedroom. I went upstairs. But I usually have a red nose with me. All right. Yeah. But I will, next time we meet, I'll bring the red nose. And uh, maybe everybody else can bring one too, because you're right, Don. One of the fatal flaws could be that you take us too seriously here. And um, yeah, that's a trap, right? So uh, let's talk a little bit about music. Well, should we start with the universal agreement? All right. Okay. And would you, would you just give us a minute on the universal agreement, how it came about? How, how did you first formulate the universal agreement, Don? Well, you know, the gong is shrouded with mystery. And so wherever you go, the mystery continues. Well, this uh, mystery of the universal greeting was I was putting on a show and there were five world servers. They were unknown. They wouldn't let you take your pictures. They, uh, they, were, they were just like, they wouldn't give their names. I only found the name of the one person and they gave this universal greeting out to me and they said, look, we know you're going to be traveling around the world. Would you please give this greeting out? And I said, oh, I, I, of course I will. The greeting happened to come through a channel, uh, uh, one of the five in the morning, and he gave it to the rest of them at breakfast. Then they came to the United States from Japan. They helped me with the show that I was putting on and they gave it to me to give to you. So uh, it was a nine sentence greeting. Well, nine, number nine is the name of the gong and the number of the gong. So immediately I said, yes, that's a, that's a gong uh, greeting. So I took it and we do the greeting now. It has its original nine gestures in order to develop telepathic resonance, which uh, <clears throat> uh, of course is the city or the power that people are developing now in this generation uh, here all around the world. It's one of those things where um, we began to really feel that the other human being is our true self and therefore no more war. Mm. So it's very important greeting. So yeah. you look at it two ways, Bob. One is the greeting, which is, hi, how are you? And the other one is the agreement so it's both a greeting and an agreement, mm. and um, we, we should do it. So let's do that. So I've got my little shruti box here. I know that lots of you have got shruti boxes. They're constant companions for us. We always have a shruti box somewhere. So what we'll do, the way we'll do this, and I think the goal would be, it would be lovely for us to do this every time we meet on Zoom and we chat things through, is that we, we do the a universal agreement, the universal greeting uh, every, every Tuesday and Thursday that we meet together. So I'm just gonna use the shrewd here to bring in some, some sound, some frequency. And I'm gonna talk you through the greeting and Don's gonna do the movements. And as Don does the movements, you can do those movements along with him too which is going to be beautiful to watch, I can feel it. So, the first gesture that we offer in the universal agreement, the universal greeting is, I offer you peace. I offer you peace. I offer you friendship. I offer you friendship. I offer you love. I hear your needs. I see your beauty. I feel your feelings. All wisdom flows from the highest source. And I honor that source in you. Let us work together. For you, my own true self 
and I am another yourself. We are one. So be it. Oh. I offer you peace. I offer you friendship. I offer you love. I hear your needs. I see your beauty. I feel your feelings. Oh, wisdom flows from the highest source. I honor that source in you. In you. Let us work together. You are my own true self. I am another yourself. We are one heart. So be it. So be it. Beautiful. It's to bring out, it's to bring out the child in us, of course, Children all over the world, they love to do that greeting. Yeah. So teaching it to them is, is a wonderful thing to do. You know, and wouldn't it be a wonderful thing to teach in schools to children? So that, you know, if another child meets a child, and maybe they don't speak the same language, Don, but they've got something in common that they can offer each other. Mm -hmm. Because the gestures will say everything. It would be a lovely thing to do. So we're trying to get that into schools. If you work in a school, if you have children, um, teach it. Teach it to your children. We're going to do this every week anyway. So it's so a wonderful many thing. The people that have joined us here are already gong masters and they're gonging yeah. and they're doing shruti for people now. So yeah, uh, the, the flock is with us. We're all angels in human bodies yeah. playing the gong and blowing the conch. Uh, and, and doing those things to bond humanity together as as one. So this is uh, basically what the gong does, is that uh, we play it, people, all of a sudden we feel that the tear down that wall. There's no wall there anymore. The gong has dematerialized all the barriers between us. And we find out that we are... Uh, we're sensing in a group, in a group consciousness, our greater self, so that we might uh, take the next step and look at the universe and see it as our, our true self. Mm. Beautiful. That's beautiful. So let's move into our first questions that um, everybody sent in. And we have, a, we have a bowl here, and I'm going to pick some questions out and uh have a little look at what we've got it's exciting isn't it this is the bit i feel like i'm doing a raffle um so the first question is um don what is a good way to cultivate inner peace at this time to cultivate inner peace what do you think bob well, I mean, if you have a gong, uh, the gong is a great way to steady the mind uh, and bring you back into the present moment, into a peaceful place. What do you think? I think that, you know, when we're playing the gong, we're really at peace. In other words, uh, we find peace when we step out of ourselves and we look at ourselves we observe ourselves, we see ourselves. I remember as an actor, and we, of course, you know, we are all actors on, the, on this great stage. So I remember that one time that I was, I was not a very good actor, uh, uh, but I wanted so badly to be a good actor. And uh, so one day I was doing a, a Shakespearean monologue and at one time, I found myself outside of my body while on stage doing Shakespeare. And of course, it was Shylock's monologue or, or the speech that he gave, I want a pound of flesh. Mm. Um, so this moment that we have where all of a sudden 
we are inside looking out and outside looking in at the same time. It's the same experience that anybody gets when they go to play the gong. Mm. And this is why it's, it's called the universal solvent. It solves a lot of problems because uh, immediately we, when we get out of our reactive self, or, uh, the character that we're playing in life, then immediately there is one go master in every body. And so I, that realization has to uh, activate in all of humanity before it's too late. Mm. Yeah. We're, we're skirting the edge of too late, too late, too late. Too much, too soon, too little, too late. And uh, so I think what the gong does is it brings us out of our uh, existential natures and puts us into a universal feeling that we are all, you know, uh, Pink Floyd's, uh, you know, in fishbowl. We're all in a fishbowl together. Yeah, yeah. I really like that idea of um, the gong rather than um, separating us, you know, um, it actually brings us, it, it, it brings us together, it unifies us. Um, you know, so even in this present times, if you've got somewhere that you can play on your own, actually, it's like a portal. It's a teleportal, a divine portal to connection with, with other people and, and, and the divine in us around. around you know, Aiden, Aiden McIntyre is one of, uh, well, I guess I call him our, our oldest uh, uh, gong master because I remember when I first met him, uh, was way back on a, at an angels conference uh, in California, and I met Aiden. And later on, and as soon as I played the gong for him and his dog, uh, he went and bought a gong. Not a very good gong, but it was his first gong. And later <laughs> on, later on, I uh, I saw that he was going to be somebody who was going to make a big difference in the world today. Yeah. Later on, I guess we'll have Aiden on the, on the show. Yeah, Aiden's going to be our first guest. Yeah. Um, so we're, um, we're going to be bringing guests on and um, having a, a good chat with, with three of us. And each, each, each time our guest will be bringing something different to the table. We've got gong makers, bowl makers, bowl players, shooty box players and makers, and lots of interesting people who are going to come in and share their wisdom with us, Don. It's going to be great. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, let's have a look in the bowl again. I'm satisfied with that answer. Um, okay, please tell us more about the goals of 2025. The goals of 2025. Well, we don't know how the gong began. Not really. It's, it's I mean, look. The, the Bronze Age started some 6,000 years ago uh, when we first discovered how to smelt metals together and make swords and, 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 and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So we, we feel that the gong, as we know it, uh, started back then. And it's represented uh, to everyone since that time to wake up, it's time for dinner, come on in, stop the work, let's stop the play, stop everything, come on in. It's mm -hmm. time to just to be still together. And of course, people would come in from the fields. I know in England, they had the dinner gong. Yeah. That was wrong in the early days, wasn't it? Yeah, that's true. When, when you heard it, you, you came in because the food was on the table. And then you would sit down and, and you'd, uh, say grace together. Mm. So um, the gong has always been known as something that uh, brings grace into your life. Mm. And this grace is like, oh, grace is something I didn't need to deserve. Grace was a gift. So we call it the gift of the gong. So when you play the gong, all of a sudden, your ego disappears, hopefully, within 30 to 90 seconds of playing. And then there's only one gong master playing. Mm. Uh, 
whoever that might be, it's it's our the, the best of the best of the best of our South is playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, when so, that happens, of course, you know, the, it isn't like, oh, this is, a, that's it. No, no, there is a change in the chemistry of the blood because the, the, um, the blood reacts to the vibrations and the wavelengths of the gong itself. So the blood carries the DNA. It carries the, the alchemy that changes our DNA. So... Um, since it brings peace to you, while it's bringing peace to you while you're playing, it is also talking to the innate intelligence and to the cells of the body, and beyond our, uh, our, our knowledge, it is changing the DNA. And this DNA, at least this is what I think, uh, is, is making a metamorphosis. In other words, we are turning from the worm into the butterfly, mm -hmm. going through the um, ego, lost in the ego, uh, you know, into, oh, you are my own true self. When that happens uh, mentally and physically, in, in other words, the glands are secreting the hormones that make up the, uh, the fluid that changes the gland and changes the chemistry of the blood. Uh, we are imprinting our dharma. Our dharma would be our anti-karma. It is our, all of a sudden we begin to feel why we were really brought here on earth, on earth to begin with. And uh, we begin to fulfill what we call our destiny. So the gong brings that higher destiny to people, and that's why it's spreading like a virus. It is actually a, a gong virus, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yep. It is spreading, and of course, humanity itself, and I wrote this, I put it on, the, on my uh, Facebook, that uh, uh, we are uh, a virus, humanity itself. It's a battle of viruses always going on. Uh, viruses always want to take over as much territory as possible. Mm -hmm. And so it, the, w this is something, and we want to take over outer space. We want to spread our viralness out into outer space. But I think before we're allowed to really do that successfully, we're going to have to change the DNA so that the uh, humanity... Uh, stops being a parasite mm. you see yeah and it, it starts here at home it starts with the gong player playing for somebody else healing thyself first when you play before you heal somebody else was a fiat given to us by the greeks the gong players actually are fulfilling that fiat because the healing sound goes through them before it gets to the uh, to the people they're playing for less than, less than a blink of the eye. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> for me, whenever we talk like this, I always feel like I'm taking part in a, a huge quantum physics experiment, you know, that everything's taking place at the same time. It's like when I first read about the string theory and, when I, when I first read about how, you know, how um, atoms communicate with each other over huge distances, I remember it blew my mind. I was thinking, how is that even possible? You know, how does that happen? What part of this am I not grasping fully? And I didn't feel like I was truly taking part in, in life until I accepted the notion that everything's connected some way. And, you know, this, this gift that we get when we surrender to, to something else like the gong or the sound and the frequency that comes out. And as a result of that surrender, the connection it gives us with everybody else, you know, the way that our atoms fire off each other is just incredible. And that, that expands my thought. It expands my being into something meaningful you know 
Um, well, you so, know, I, I, it's, I, I think of it as a baptism. Uh, you know, uh, I, I remember uh, my mother was Catholic. My father wasn't. He didn't like the Catholics at all. So uh, they never got along either. So what happened was with, she stuck me out of the house when I was a little, little baby and had me baptized as a Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> he still doesn't know about it. He, if he knew about it today, he'd turn over in his grave. But so that, but this idea of uh, baptism, you know, baptism uh, was a yogic trick. In other words, you take a person and you and hold them under water uh, until the bubbles stop coming up, and then you pull them out before they die. And and the dove uh, of peace, or their true self, des descends into their, their ego body. So I, I always look at it as that the great waters of space are baptizing us again and again, not just once, but like all the time. And uh, uh, and this, I think, is something that we don't usually consider when we go to play, that, that we're going for another baptism. Yeah, what a lovely thought. Because it's easy just to get, it's easy to feel singular and get swallowed in and forget about what you were saying there, this constant baptism that's coming down on us. It's easy to get pulled into your own, let's call it ego, or the sense of I, or, or single, singularity. Yeah. Mm. And I suppose going back to the 2025, which was the root of this conversation and the question, is that in 2025, when gong, gong masters, cheers, gong masters all over the world come together, all right, so and play that we're going to bring about. You know, what are we going to do about this? Yeah. Um, Alice A. Bailey and Matt Blavatsky, the, the, the two granddams of the, of the Theosophical Society that started mm. this whole thing that we're involved with, or they were early pioneers, that um, they felt that at a certain time, the Rainbow family would be enlightened. The Rainbow family would be the seven races of men, I guess, or if you want to say eight. And uh, that they were the, we were the Rainbow family. And in the 60s, that's what we called ourselves. We were yeah. The Rainbow family. The Rainbow children. The Rainbow children. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this Rainbow, uh, the, the most resonant part of the rainbow would be the middle of the top of the rainbow. It would be, this is called the color green. As you know that we haven't been really good members of the rainbow family here on earth because we've practically degreened the earth. Mm. We have wiped out the green through warfare. So the fourth ray has been the uh, ray of a resolution through conflict. It's 10 o'clock. And of course, there is no resolution through conflict. It's a mirage, yes? Uh, it's a rainbow. So, but it's changing now and transmuting into a ray of working together in functional harmony like the, a gong does, gongs mm. do. So we're going through a big change but we have this territorial instinct in us. Uh, uh, we, we want to conquer territory. We want to protect our own territory. So uh, this territorial instinct has got to be uh, sublimated and evolved and, uh, and take its new uh, evolution. It has to transvolute into another quality in humanity, so war becomes obsolete. Yeah. This is what's going on right now. The gong has come along as a friend to everybody in order to change this reptilian nature into one of compassion, sharing, caring. We call it the Maitreyan concept. Mm. So, uh, we play it because it's for like for a child, and it's so much fun. But look at this thing that's so much fun 
that looks like a UFO and it takes us into some sort of space, inner space, mm -hmm. and we look at it and we can't imagine that something so simple that has been ignored for so many thousands of years is actually uh, an inner spaceship to take us out of this local dimension mm. to our greater selves. So it's really an amazing thing. And there is a date, of course, that they felt that there are two rays right now that don't have a master, an overseer, a consciousness over them uh, in the seven rays of the human race. So two of them would be the first ray, willpower, mm -hmm. politics. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the fourth ray was the ray of either conflict or of working together. So this fourth ray of conflict and working together is being repolarized now. And they have a date uh, that uh, uh, requires a prediction, and, uh, a guess as to when is that date going to be? Well, they have predicted it, that it's going to be in 2025. They didn't say when, or the whole year, whatever. Of course, we have the uh, WESAC ceremony that takes place in May. And the, the mythology is, is that Buddha, Gautama Buddha, uh, was born, enlightened, and passed over on the full moon of May. So it, it's sort of like his headlights in our face. The full moon of May may be when we begin to experience ourselves as all Maitreya. We're all friends to everyone. Mm. So everyone becomes our friend. If that gene can change within the uh, long DNA of, our, of our, our genes, then all of a sudden war will be obsolete. And no, no more of this reptilian virus type of taking on territory and all of that will we'll just, it'll, it'll stop. We'll begin to ask each other, uh, for instance, USA, the United States, if they look at another country and say, uh, what do you need? And each country would do that, then we would then gift each other, give what we have to give as a gift to somebody who needs that gift. It's called the new economy of, of love, mm. caring and sharing. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we'll cover more of the 2025 Alice Bailey, Madame Blavatsky stuff. I think when we, when we talk about Starhenge as, as well, when we bring Martha in, to talk about Starhenge because it's such a full topic. There's so much to talk about there. And look, when people, uh, after we grew up, uh, you have to realize that myths are very important. If you don't have a myth, mm. then you don't have really know how to make the best use of life. Mm. So we are creating the myth of the future. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, this is, uh, to me, uh, another important thing to consider. We are living a myth in the creation of itself. Mm. Lovely. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me pull another question out of the bowl so we get a little, some variety. Let's have a look. Okay. Um, do you think gonging someone over a distance is still as effective or an effective tool for healing? Well, of course. Yeah. It's the thought that counts. Yeah, the intention, right? Yeah. It's the intention that is sending over. It's, it's, a, it's a game changer. Mm. It is also uh, in our DNA and RNA. It is a, a, it also changing the DNA. We're constantly uh, massaging the DNA in our systems. So it is a technique, we call it a yoga technique, uh, in order to do that. Mm. So that, 
that means if you've got a little old phone or a walkie-talkie, what comes through that is the real essence? What's the quintessence of the essence? What comes through a speaker that is not uh, one on one face face? In other words, if you're playing your song and singing your shooty songs, which you do so beautifully, um, the essence of that is being transmitted, you see? And these, the, your essence is part of its quintessence. It's being shipped along with that on what we call a sonal ray. This sound ray is really the important. So therefore, you can send it in a whisper. You can do it in a sonorous voice. Mm -hmm. It can be done through a radio. It can be done through a television. That sonal ray is, is delivered to any medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think? I think that, um, you know, we've been giving um, gong baths online regularly, once, twice a week. Um, I've received healing from people who sent me healing, uh, who I knew were playing at a certain time. And <clears throat> part of me, um, part of the process for me was, was me acknowledging that, accepting that healing coming into me. You know, it's a two-way process. So, you know, they said to me, I'll be playing for you at 10 o'clock. I was going into hospital for an operation, actually. And I had four or five good friends around the world um, gonging me into the operation and gonging for the whole time I was in there. And the feeling of well-being, the sense of support um, that that gave me was, was immeasurable to know that that was happening, just to even know that that was happening. It connected me to them on a quantum level, on a cellular level, on a DNA level that I wouldn't have had if I'd have just been on my own going in and having that, you know, when they put you to sleep and everything that's connected to that. So absolutely, um, it was as, as effective for me as anything else I could have received. Um, and we get people, um, we get uh, people who, who email us after our gong bath to, uh, and distance healings to, to report you know fabulous things that have happened to them you know um so yeah it's it's a form of quantum healing um we're all quantum physicists every one of us in our own way yeah it's also a frisbee you know a frisbee too yeah and a shield you yeah know. one day in canada i was playing the gong for a conference i forget what kind of conference it was and um the gut on my my third 28-inch heisty symphonic gong, which I had for so many years, uh, broke while I was doing one of the aerial things with the gong. The, oh, the vortex. The vortex. Um, and, it, and it flew flew out of the vortex and flew exactly aerodynamically like a UFO all the way over the heads of these poor people, it's, you know, not knowing that a danger was overhead. Uh, and flew past them and landed on the floor. <laughs> I love that. You were lucky, though. Uh, very lucky, yes. Yeah. yeah. Being watched over. <laughs> I wasn't quite conscious. You know, when you're playing the gong, of course, you're in a sort of a trance state. Yeah. yeah. The gong's very heavy, so when you get in that trance state, uh, the lightness comes to you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, um, distance healings, working with the gong on the internet, which is what we're all doing at the moment. It's as effective as, in a different way, uh, as um, taking part in, in a gong. Yeah, obviously. The no, but the essence can't be stopped. No. So uh, the essence goes through. The aesthetics is something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is nice to go into a room and lay on the floor and feel the, the vibrations of a, well, that's of a gong it. hitting you. The full yeah. body massage. Yeah, um, and that's, that's nice too. But you know, um, what, one time uh, we were doing a, a recording of it, and this guy was, uh, some of my recordings are in three dimension. So what that does is it creates a ghost. In other words, you, um, 
you feel that the presence is actually there. It's a three-dimensional feeling. Uh, and he played the gong. I played the gong, and then he turned on this this ghost me in the center of the stage, and uh, we listened to the gong being played back. And you know, you could almost visualize the gong appearing mm. through the sound, and the sound was could have fooled anybody. So, one mm. thing that tells us this though is that whatever the gong you have, it's your gong. Mm. And don't say anything bad about my gong, please, even though it's not what you would call the world's, you know, best gong. Uh, to me, it's my gong, it's my baby. And when you feel that closeness, that it's not just a metal object, then the gong begins to perform for you and through you better. Mm. You need to get up close and personal with your gong. You have to feel that it's a, you're an extension of it, it's an extension of you. You have, there's a gong psychology that occurs to most people when they go to play the gong. And this helps in the, uh, whether it's a, a healing at a distance. You know, on, on this um, big event that's coming up on the full moon of May. Oh yeah, we can tell everybody about that. Um, the full moon of May, we're going to do another world, world gong in a world, world puja, right? Yeah, and there are different ways, of course, that you do that. One is that you pass the, the, the puck, you pass the ball along mm -hmm. from time zone to time zone as the earth turns around at that time. And so it becomes a wave around the world. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. Uh, and this is the way that we usually do it. We're doing something different this time in that we are all focusing in on the time in WESAC that the event is taking place. And whether it's four o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the afternoon, your time, if you figure it out so that you're playing at the same time, then for the first time we're playing together. Mm -hmm at this most propitious time of the WESAC ceremony when uh, a fresh dispensation of wisdom uh, comes down into this uh, earth plane. And, that, and WESAC is the 7th of May, Don, yeah? It is, yeah. yeah the first full moon in May. Uh -huh. And of course, you know, the 45 minute gonging uh, is a number nine. Mm -hmm. I know, um, after a while, the gong players begin fascinated by numerology because nine is the number of the gong. Mm -hmm. uh, so, a lot of the things that we do, if the digits end in nine, it, it, it's, it's, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Number nine. So, we, uh, we're going to experience that because each time that we gong around the world, uh, what we're doing is we're helping the DNA of the uh, eight, 8 billion people that live here uh, that way more and more. And uh, if we have enough gong players out there gonging as they multiply according to the principle of phi, then uh, perhaps by 2025, we'll have enough proportion of people experiencing the gong so that we might have a, a functional harmony or peace on earth mm. or war. Well, we'll keep moving in that direction. We'll all keep doing our good work and we'll all um, push down that track. I think that's why everybody's here. And I think there's going to be a lot more people coming in to join us as we move on. Um, one final question before we um, begin to wrap things up. And I know it's been a question that's been on a lot of people's minds recently um, because we've had a lot of people um, just sending us personal messages on Facebook is um, how to kind of create the best setup for online um, work. You know, um, how do we get the best sound quality and what tools can we use and what apps and software? And at this point, I'd like to mention uh, Claudio Salinas. Hi, Claudio. 
Claudio is a great friend of ours. And um, on the uh, Don's Teachable uh, site, on, on Teachable, uh, is it? OnlineGongTraining.com. OnlineGongTraining.com. Um, OnlineGongTraining.com. Um, there's a section there uh, done by Claudio where he talks about setting up your computer, your laptop, however you work, some of the tools you can use to do that. Um, it's really informative. I've, I've looked at it. It's really good, Claudio, great work. And um, I believe that that's going to develop as well um, uh, as, as it moves on. Claudio's going to add to that as, as, um, as everything kind of moves forward in this virtual world that we're all working in now. So um, for those of you who are interested in that, have a look at Claudio's work on there. Uh, it's really interesting. It's really great. Thank you, Claudio. That's a great service for many people who were stuck in the quagmire of technology, trying to work out how do I sound um, the best I can. So that's a great place for that information. Um, so um, one of the, the, the questions that many of you are going to be asking and, and have asked um, is where can we find more information about the next talks that are coming up? Um, you know, the next events and Don's training, that's a lot going on, Don's training is going online now. Um, and that's going to be on a website um, that's, and in the chat, that, uh, and in the chat um, um, for the separate events. It's all being developed at the moment. So it'll all be revealed as we move on. But there's a new website called online gong master training.com online gong master training.com. You'll be able to register for the chats that we're going to be doing weekly um as we move forward um and don't forget uh, don't forget sign up yeah sign up because what we want to do is we want to go very deeply and thoroughly into all of the possibilities of what we can do as one gong master in many bodies and uh this is something that requires you to ask questions uh Believe me, asking questions is something that has been suppressed in in life a lot. Mm. So make sure we have a we have a bowl, and all the questions that you send in to Bob and Lindsay, well, they're going to uh, reach in there and pull out the the question and answer it like that. So. Uh, just to say as well, some of the questions that you've sent in. I've actually put them aside for different talks when we've got different invited guests because some of the guests that we've got coming in, I know we'll, we'll have a, a, a great time um, chewing on those. So we'll, we'll pull the juice out of them with, with some of the invited guests. So we're making up several lists as we get questions and they're flying in, which is lovely. It's perfect. It's what we need. Um, okay, so um, as part of our, our structure, Don, um, in these chats, we're going to end each chat with um, an affirmation and also with a mudra that um, maybe you can offer to us to go along with that affirmation. Um, so maybe you could um, maybe just tell us about the mudra we'll be using today uh, and um, we'll look at an affirmation to go with that. Well, I just put two new mudras on Facebook. I hope everybody's a Facebook friend. They probably are. Um, but there are two mudras. This mudra here that is used so much is called the Hand of Maitreya. Remember Benjamin Krem? He's gone now. But he showed a handprint of, a, of somebody putting their hand on the glass. And he said that this was a handprint of, of Maitreya becoming Buddha. So this is used in the jungles. This is used everywhere in the world to show people that you don't have a weapon in your hand. Mm -hmm. But that's only one level of it, of course, there are other levels, which is uh, the way that we use this because the palm of the hand is called the ninth chakra. You know, the aura is your eighth chakra, your electromagnetic field. And this the feet and the palms of the hands are this chakra. So when we use this particular, it's called Abhaya Mudra. And it is a signal of, uh, I offer you peace. Mm. Uh, so this was a very important one. Of course, you use it, don't you? So many of you people are Reiki masters out there. Mm. 
And the first uh, Reiki, before Reiki, was, of course, the uh, Ramacharaka, Yogi Ramacharaka. And uh, he used this in order to project pranas, the healing pranas on people. And we, of course, we use this gesture with two hands. When you're playing the gong with one hand gonging, the other hand is used in this mudra so that it becomes number nine gong and number nine gong both begin to project the, uh, the ray of energy uh, out to people and to focus it. So this is very important as well. And you can, when we do this one here, we can use it and turn it into different gestures with coming together like that, the pressing, doing a pranayam, doing it, bring the hands back out again, sending the rays out to the people again. So really mastering the gong of self is involved with playing the gong in a physical level. Mm. And of course, each time then we have, this one is used a lot by the gurus. When they're doing that, they're always going like that. Yes. Mm. Or the hand in holding the hand out like this. These are kind of like in your face suggestions about how to use the gong hands in order to help increase the powers of the healing. So we're working a lot now with these different mudras. Mm. And of course, Don, just to pick up there on what you were saying about now we're using the mudras while we play. Yes. Um, to focus the energy, the sound, the prana, um, coming into and out of the gong. It's sort of a takeoff on that old coin. What is the sound of one hand clapping? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, it's, you can do like that too. But the idea is that you're using the other hand to clap on the gong, hit the mm -hmm. gong. And then you're using this hand here to project out to the world as well. You, mm -hmm. You're never alone when you play the gong. No. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. And um, what about an affirmation for today? What can we take away with us as an affirmation? Uh, well, you know, the, I, my favorite one that I put in, in one of the books here was... Uh, uh, this is a good one, too. I, I changed my mind. Here... The cup of prayer that we do, like this. I offer you my heart. Here. I offer you my heart. A good one is, now all your troubles are gone. You're holding in your hands the light of wisdom. Now all my troubles are gone. All our troubles are gone. We our are troubles are gone. Our hands we are holding in our hands the light of wisdom. Now all our troubles are gone. We are holding, holding in our hands the light of wisdom. Yeah. So Beautiful. we have done that one before. That was the first time. And yeah. That's really number four. Mm -hmm. So, two nice mudras. Um, I, an affirmation to take away with for the day. And what about um, as we come to the end of our session, because our time is has, has oh. flown by. What about a nice shruti for us to all share as we as we leave? Oh, well, everybody's going to have a lot of nice shruti enlightenment uh, in this mm. course as well. Mm. There's so much, uh, we call it gong trivia, but yeah. it's essential for the expansion of the, uh, the gong player. Mm. Uh, you want me to do this with mine? Oh, yeah, please. Hear it? Yeah. Everybody has to go. Oh. Now all your troubles are gone. Now all your troubles are gone. Now all your troubles are gone. All your troubles are gone. Now all your troubles are gone. 
Now all your troubles are gone. And you are holding in your hands. And you are holding in your hands. Yes, you are holding in yes, your hands. Yes, you are holding in your hands. The light of wisdom. The light of wisdom. The light of wisdom. The light of wisdom. The light, the light. The light of wisdom. The light, the light, the light of wisdom. In your hands you have the light of wisdom. In your hands you have the light of wisdom. In your hands you have, you have, you have. In your hands you have, you have, you have the light of wisdom. Yeah. You see, so... Um, now, what this is called uh, massaging the Shruti. It is the Aquarian age, Uranian way of singing, of surprise yourself, surprise yourself. If you could stay in the moment and not think about the way you did it before, the way you're gonna do it from now on, you can hit that moment mm. of timelessness, of eternity. Okay, so it's great, it's bliss, yeah, form of bliss. But also in that moment, that opening of time, the innate intelligence is repairing parts of your body you can't get to because of the conditioned mind is interfering all the time. So it has a good benefit. Mm. I, you know, I find singing with the Shruti um, has helped me so much over the years, you know. It's allowed me to surrender over so many things that weren't working kept, for me. Kept you out of trouble. It's kept me out of trouble. Yeah, it has in so many ways. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, Bob? yeah, Bob, yeah, there, we've got two people who've raised their hands. Um, oh, and I know that we only have three minutes left, so I just wanted to give you the heads up. Oh, Gail okay, and Jackie. I think I've answer Jackie's question. Okay. Uh, so, we're learning about these hands up. So what do we do with Jill? Uh, Jill, let me unmute her. Jill, you're being unmuted. Jill. Hi, Jill. Jill, Hi. you have to unmute yourself. All is good. Oh, there you are. Look at you. Your moon gong behind you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone's around. Everyone's with us. All at once. A beautiful song. It's lovely to sing with everyone. It's so beautiful to see the sun shining everywhere. So it's it's going to see everyone is nervous and looking after one another. So lovely to see. Even Madame Blavatsky. My sound is not good, by the no, way. No, uh, um, cool. we can't really hear you too well, um, Jill. My microphone. I need to loud yourself with the microphone. <laughs> Look, uh, you made me, you remind me of something, though, that we only have a couple of minutes. Uh, and we're talking about the future here. Um, uh, everybody here, uh, if you, we're going to have a huge map of the world. Uh, and we have a sort of a, like our own United Nations of gong players. Uh, so what we're going to do is that you're going to write your name down in a particular part of the world map as a world servant in that area. And we're going to hopefully run out of pens quickly as we uh, begin to... Um, see ourselves, see our family for the first time as it exists around the world today, or the people who are in the front lines of uh, bringing uh, peace and functional harmony to people. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, if you make sure that when you, you put your names down, you also put the part of the world that you uh, do most of your work in. Bob, this has been amazing. And thank you, Yael, 
our other host, S. with an OSIS, um, and we're going to see hopefully all of you on Thursday. Please check the chat box for the links to sign up. And if you have any questions to submit, it's donconroe at gmail.com. Make sure you put Don Paul question in the subject. Lovely. So um, that just leaves us to thank you all for coming to join us. Um, thank you, Don for sharing your wisdom with us again. It was a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. And um, thank you everybody around the world, because I know there are people all around the world in Hong Kong and there are people in all over Europe and in England and UK and all over the USA. And I mean, it's, it's wonderful. Um, so thank you so much everybody for giving us your time and energy. Um, we love you all. You're all our family. And um, yeah, anything you'd like to say to leave us on, Don? Well, no, except that uh, I, I'm really so happy that finally that we have really uh, found our mission in life. Once you pick up a gong, you know, it's like half gong will travel and that's it. And we're all travelers here through going through and here. So I'm, I really feel blessed to be a part of such a great mm. family. Yeah, lovely. God bless you. Thank you. See you on Thursday, hopefully. Goodbye. Om. <laughs> I, you know, I never know how to get away. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Exit full screen. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so fun.